We have been expecting to see expansion, first in Shanghai, then in Berlin, uh, really even in Mexico and kind of everywhere, but it just hasn't happened. And now we're getting our first glimpse as to perhaps the reason why. So let's talk about Tesla's plans in Berlin and why they are on hold. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So you guys, I've got this uh, article in front of me from uh, Tesla Roddy. It's uh, pretty interesting. It says uh, that uh, just that their expansion plans rely on increased sales. They want to increase sales before they proceed with the expansion plans. We're not going to spend several billion to the expansion of the factory without the signals being clear uh, that the market is asking for this, said Tesla Giga Berlin plant manager Andre Tirig. Now, this is important because this is the first time we've heard anything like this. Uh, we thought that they would just grow into infinity, and it hasn't happened. Now, when I was in Mexico recently, um, I had a chance to talk with people on the ground there. Uh, some people somewhat in the know, including ones who were not willing or able to go on camera. And what they were telling me was that they don't know what's going on. They have not heard. Uh, the stated reasons didn't necessarily make sense. We know that uh, Elon had said, well, until we know what the actual trade deal is going to be, if they're going to somehow cut off auto sales from Mexico uh, or impose tariffs on them that are prohibitive, well, that's going to put a crimp in it. Except that those factors weren't in play a year ago when we thought we would see groundbreaking, and they don't apply in other places. Why hasn't Shanghai built a compact car factory? Why hasn't Berlin built their compact car factory? And there's a reason for that, I believe, but we'll get to it in just a second. First, we're going to look at this. Um, last month, the uh, Environment uh, Office partially approved Tesla's expansion plans. Tesla received permission to start construction within the buildings, uh, within the existing facility. The approval does not give permission to cut down more trees in the forest, uh, but, the, uh, but it has allowed them uh, to add to the loading and logistics lot, and it has allowed them to add stairwells in places that they felt they needed them. I imagine that's a safety and accessibility issue. I think that's a no-brainer in terms of approvals for things like that go. Uh, so that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. But why aren't they expanding? Why aren't they making more cars? Well, they still have spare capacity on the Model Y lines. Building four separate factories to build Model Ys has gotten them to the number one spot worldwide. It's made it so that the engineering is very efficient and that the supply chain is very lean and nimble. Uh, but what it hasn't done is expand. Once you're at number one, you kind of start running out of headroom. Where are you going to grow from there? And the answer to that is, I just don't know. That's why we need a new model or two or 10. Who knows? OK, maybe not 10. But the idea is that if they could make an intermediate model Y or an intermediate model three, do it. Something a little smaller, a little simpler. Sure, do it. Trim 5,000, 10,000 off the price you can sell. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to see first. That appears to be the plan. Uh, how do you get to that? The Juniper refresh, which we believe will be coming uh, around Q1, is likely to spur new demand, fresh demand, add more vehicles to the used inventory. It's going to be great. I think what we're going to see, and I should make a whole video on it, is basically what we saw with the Model 3 fresh. It's going to be good. So let's jump back over here. And see this, <laughs> they've got a new gym. Since the beginning of the year, many companies have discussed a decline in global EV market. This has affected different automakers at various levels. Tesla acknowledged the plateauing EV market for the 2020 for 2024, but remained steadfast in its belief, of course. We firmly believe the market will pick up again. It is certainly a question of how quickly and when. So, yeah, that's great. Uh, because we are now also serving the right-hand drive market in Great Britain and Ireland from Berlin, we have a larger sales market that we can access directly. Now, we know that sales uh, and production, and specifically from Shanghai, is up. Where are all those units going? Well, we're seeing a lot of them being sold in China again. We'd seen some new cars, some new Xiaomi's, some new BYDs that were pretty flashy and exciting, but their sales uh, kind of leveled off pretty quickly because it's not a Tesla. And Tesla's got brand cachet. Tesla's not just the new hotness anymore. It's just a good car. 
and that carries weight. And the fact that it's made in China means they can sell them at prices that would make you and I cry with jealous rage uh, because they're so much more affordable within the Chinese market. So what are we waiting for? We're waiting for the big pivot. What's it going to be? Well, it was going to be on 8.8 and now it's going to be on 10.10. Uh, or Rin Tin Tin. I don't know. I don't know how these things work. I don't know what lucky numbers are in China, but on 1010, we're going to see a pivot. We're going to see the new strategy. Um, I didn't invest in this uh, because it was any old company. Now, I did invest in 2019 because I believe, just on the strength of Fremont and the partially completed Shanghai, that this stock would outperform the market over a 10 year horizon. I've done all right with that. But I remained invested, even through all-time highs, because I could see beyond it. If I believed that this was just a car company, that this was just something that uh, was hype plus a bit of cars, I would have sold when it got to 50 or 100 uh, post-split. In pre-split dollars, maybe 800. I don't know. But I didn't because I could see past that. I could see the additional models, and then I could see the power of autonomy looming. It wasn't as close as I had hoped. I could see, and since then, I could see the all the other things. I could see Dojo. I could see um, the bot. I could see uh, uh, stationary storage. All of those things are hugely valuable to me. If I were to sell my Tesla shares today, what would I buy? I'd probably buy into robotics and AI. But I don't know which ones to buy into because there's a hundred of each and they all look pretty good. What I don't see from a lot of AI companies is any way to get that proficiency, to get that product to market. How do you take that clever bit of code and translate it into something that's worth money? I see Tesla having a strategy for that. They can use the, the AI that they have and the AI that they're trying to buy into via XAI to get smart robo taxi management, to get a lot of clever things that they need. What about robots? Again, I'm seeing some really promising stuff out there with figure and others, but what I'm not seeing for a lot of them is a path to marketing. The product has to go somewhere. Someone has to buy it. Well, what if no one's going to buy it? What if no one will buy your product? Well, Tesla can use the product themselves. They can use it in-house. But when it comes to manufacturing, there are very few co companies who are in this space that have the ability to actually manufacture, let alone at scale. So if all things being equal, even if Tesla comes in second or third or 10th place, they could still outcompete the competition because they can manufacture, because they have their own batteries, because they own their own manufacturing development systems through acquisitions with Maxwell and Highbar and others. They can make the machines themselves, and then the bots can make themselves. I mean, that's a little further down the road, perhaps, but it's right there. You can see it coming. So what are you going to do with all that? It won't show up as sales if you keep them all internally. It'll just show up as a lowered cost of goods sold, a reduction in payroll. Pretty hard to spot on a balance sheet as big as Tesla's, but it will be there. It will be real. The amount of batteries it takes to power a bot is so much smaller than it is a car. The amount of factory space you need to manufacture a bot is virtually nothing. And as we've seen from other companies, these fold up nicely to store overhead uh, neatly in your overhead bin. So that means, while well, we haven't seen that the new Optimus, and we may not for some time, we only saw the Optimus because it was a recruiting event and they needed to recruit. I think they are done recruiting. I think they've shown enough to get new talent. I think they know enough people from inside their own company who can talk to their friends and say, this is the place you need to be. So I don't think they need recruiting. I'm not sure we're going to see it. If we do, hey, it'll be great. And when it finally is put into production, we know some are already in factories. We know that there will be thousands next year, thousand plus next year. Then we'll start to get an idea of what we're actually looking at, what its actual market value is, and what it costs to produce. I'm thinking even early ones they can build for less than forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, which means even if they're half the speed of a human but can run 24 hours, they're still worth more in their first year than the humans they replace. Is it going to happen? Probably. Is it ethical? Well, with AI, with robotics, with autonomy, all of it does come down to a question of ethics, but it's happening. So I think uh, it'd be nice to have a, a company that does have an eye on that future. 
Elon was the first to say, we need an AI code of ethics. We need to put guardrails in place. No one has listened. No one is interested. So maybe that's not going to happen. Guys, on this front, what have I missed? What have I misunderstood? Are my thoughts on why the factories are not yet proceeding accurate? And the last thing I will say on this, because this is a big one, is I don't think autonomy is ready. Because if it was, I think these factories would already be underway in Mexico, in Berlin, in Shanghai. We may have a pilot line in Texas, but the space we believed would house it is now dedicated to the supercomputer. So I think there's space free in the factory where they can build it, but it would not be a million car line or a four million car line. It'd be more of a pilot line, which is great, but it doesn't mean autonomy is solved. And if autonomy was solved, I think we'd be going gangbusters producing cars as fast as we can because this is coming. And when it does, it's going to be a tsunami of cash. What did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave it in the comments below and uh, like, subscribe, do the usual. You know what you're doing. Stay tuned and juicy. I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots. Yes, robots on the flippity flop.